Welcome once again to the Fox 54 Week in Review, highlighting stories of progress, togetherness, and the people that make North Alabama such a fantastic place to live. One thing that's making it a somewhat uncomfortable place to be right now is the heat. In this week's episode, we're covering how to stay safe in the extreme temperatures and examine how coaches are keeping athletes cool as we kick off into high school football season. There is a cost to progress, and as Huntsville Utilities expands with a growing boom town, officials have a growth plan, but it involves an increase in your bill. We'll examine the figures and compare them with other cities in Alabama. Then we'll look at a bittersweet outreach program to help tackle food insecurity in our communities, named after a person whose death shocked our area. But we'll start with the building of bridges, not physical bridges, but socioeconomic ones, bridging a gap between the bioscience industry and our undeserved populations. Seven fellows at the start of initial training in Hudson Alpha's educational outreach program. In my journey of applying to medical school, one of the main things that I've been lacking is research experience. Meet Hudson Alpha Bridges fellow Marche Scott. I feel like coming here, doing this program, and taking heed to this opportunity uh, will just allow me to be able to get that research experience and then further be able to guide myself through and figure out which career path I want to take. Scott believes sometimes choosing the right career can be challenging. Uh, a lot of times we are lost and we don't know what's out there. We don't know what we want to do with our lives. But in this case, Hudson Alpha is here to help. We feel like it's very important to be able to offer this kind of opportunity for these students because they've faced a lot of challenges through the COVID pandemic. And we've seen that students have not been able to get into the labs and really experience what it's like to learn those skills. For the first two weeks, fellows will learn lab and computational skills as well as onboarding as new employees at Hudson Alpha. So being able to um, bring them into the Institute and give them that opportunity really strengthens them and builds a bridge to their next opportunity. And as the program continues, fellows will transition to their permanent labs within Hudson Alpha for a year to expand their skills before moving to graduate school or into the workforce. Um, so just being able to come to a place like this, a program like this, and have so much information at our disposal, it just gives us the tools we need to go out and change the world. In Huntsville, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. University of North Alabama and the Land Trust of North Alabama have signed a learning agreement that started this school year. Our Sedona Meadows takes us out to Chapman Mountain Nature Preserve to learn exactly what this partnership is all about. Imagine studying environmental education in college, but instead of learning in the classroom, you have the ability to learn out here in nature. To be able to help them understand you know, what's going on in this larger space around them, that to me is one of the most exciting things. Tim Gowles, the Education Director for Land Trust of North Alabama, is energized to work with students from the University of North Alabama through a new learning agreement. What I point out to students as we go through an area like this is how it has an effect on the levels of the forest. A partnership that benefits both entities. There's gonna be some mutually beneficial partnerships between us and the Land Trust, um, where our faculty and staff and, and students get to actually make a contribution at the Land Trust, and they benefit from, from volunteer efforts. UNA students who are studying subjects like education, earth science, and recreation management will get boots on the ground experience at different LTNA properties, whether it be for research, learning how to manage these properties, or simply just learning natural science for them to be able to get out onto the preserves, do some research and actually experience the things that they're going to experience really gives them a body of knowledge that they're able to take back ultimately to their own classrooms. In North Alabama being so biodiverse, it's the perfect place to learn. I think a lot of students, once they realize this is something I can actually go to a university and study and, and major in, uh, it's going to be an attractive thing uh, to boost our enrollment uh, while we provide a very viable program for, for students who have that passion. Passion and appreciation for nature is felt by both UNA and LTNA. I'm so excited for the body of work that's going to be done by so many different people. And the students will be ready to continue their environmental contributions after school. We're actually training people to go out and, and take an active part in the workforce as soon as they graduate. Well, after all of this walking, I needed to take a seat at Chapman Mountain Nature Preserve in Huntsville, Sedona Meadows, Fox 54 News. 
Sleep-related illnesses occur when the body is exposed to high temperature and high humidity, but today we're learning some of the signs and learning how to prevent heat-related illnesses with proper hydration. Let's take a look. Some signs would be fatigue, confusion, um, nausea and vomiting are the most frequent ones. In these dangerous heat conditions, um, you can be susceptible to heat-related illnesses, anything from muscle cramps all the way to severe uh, complications like heat stroke. And if someone, especially children, would happen to show these signs, it's probably time to be treated. They need to be brought into a cool area and hydrated as much as possible. If they are having altered mental status though they should probably be seen in the ER. In one way everyone can better protect themselves from this extreme heat is by wearing appropriate covering. Light cottony type fabric um, trying to avoid the intense sun during the middle to late time of day when the uh, when the sun is most intense and drinking plenty of liquids. You want to make sure that you are um, drinking plenty of water and avoiding things that make you lose water like caffeine. So are there any risks for teens who are active? They are outside and especially profusely sweating, they're losing a lot of electrolytes. And so they can actually, more than just getting dehydrated, that's when they can end up having kidney injury as well as electrolyte imbalances. Another thing to consider is checking on the elderly. Elderly individuals are more likely to have underlying medical conditions um, and maybe on medications that may make, make them more susceptible. You may want to check on them and make sure that their heating, their cooling is working appropriately, that they have what they need. Just a reminder of just how dangerous this heat really is. Four young local athletes suffered from overheating. The players were at football practice at Columbia High School yesterday when the heat began affecting them. Two were taken to the hospital for further treatment. The other two were treated on the field. So um, when I started seeing kids really overheating, you know, I played ball back in the day as well. Uh, so I'm used to like full body cramps, you know, I got asthma as well, so you know when you see certain type of problems like that, that's when you was like, hey man, this this don't look good. Let's let's see what we need to do for the next step. Yeah, well, thankfully their injuries were non-life threatening, and all are recovering. Our Jasmine Burt talked with one athletic administrator about precautions being taken in his school system. As far as the heat goes, we follow the Alabama High School Athletic Association guidelines for exercise restrictions. Heat-related illnesses occur when the body is exposed to high temperature and high humidity. Um, and basically they, they, they put us into four categories. Low risk, moderate risk, high risk, and extreme. Um, this week we're sitting at the moderate to high uh, levels, um, which is heat indexes which exceed 91 degrees. Um, and so we're changing practice formats, changing the amount of equipment that the, the players wear uh, to try to kind of um, make sure that we've got their best interest in mind. So have there been any changes in practice times? They practice for 45 minutes this, er this morning um, in, in shells. Um, they're going to go again this afternoon for just 45 minutes um, in helmets or with no helmets at all. Um, again, just kind of getting them prepared for Friday night. Um, New Hope is going helmets only for all practices this week. Again, just mentally preparing uh, since it's so difficult on their bodies. Um, you know, Hazel Green and Spartman also uh, are, are limiting practice times. Uh, According to the CDC, anyone exposed to high temperatures or extreme can experience heat-related illness symptoms when the body's temperature control system is overloaded. Um, we as a district um, have have um, things in place to kind of make sure that we care for any heat related illnesses uh, in the correct manner. Um, for example, um, we try to have a cool area, whether it be indoors in a field house, whether it be in a shaded area of the practice field where if a kid becomes over overheated, um, we can tend to them there. And their rule of thumb is? It's always cool first and transport second. Um, so we, we contact EMS if we believe that anybody's having any kind of heat related illness, um, but we want to cool that body temperature before we actually put them in, um, in an ambulance and start transporting them. In Huntsville, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. Well, it's no secret we've been feeling some extreme heat 
Local ice rinks are getting hit with heat too. Staff at Huntsville Ice Sports Center is trying to keep the ice from melting and maintaining the systems. And the way to do it is by having people enter and exit through the same set of doors. This setup is only temporary until we can all beat this heat and it will remain through this Saturday. They also encourage you to come out to the ice rink to get a break from these hot temperatures. This is the, the coolest place in town to be in this extreme heat. Um, you know, we offer a wide variety of activities along, you know, public session and everybody's always free to come in and watch. You know, we do have um, areas to sit in the cool if they just really need a, a cool place to be. And as we mentioned, the door consolidation is only temporary. They appreciate everyone's cooperation and understanding during this time. If you're new to the Rocket City, you may not know the history behind Lakeside United Methodist Church. But if you take a seat during a Sunday service, you just might learn something. To have a vision simply means to see things other people cannot see. For Dr. Randy Kelly, his whole life has been about education, whether he's the student. Some of my teachers uh, were Miles College students during the time of Project C in Birmingham uh, where Dr. Fred Shellsworth invited Dr. King and other national civil rights leaders and they were protesters and they was, became educators so they would bring books about black history and, and uh, give us extra credit for reading. Or the teacher. He talks about us being doers of the word, not hearers only, you know be in action. We have a long freedom tradition in the, in the black church. And my role in this generation is to inspire other activists, the ensuing generations, as well as to continue the struggle because the struggle is not over. He has taught uh, as when he was in the military as well as in the seminary. His past experience in race relations and equal opportunity in the military taught him that there's been a lack in education. I taught black history courses and I taught uh, courses to officers, many of them didn't know anything about black history. And later on, I learned that that was designed, that black history had been suppressed and omitted from uh, uh, school libraries. Since he's been a pastor in different cities across Alabama, he's made it his mission to share black history. He always makes a, a comment that if you don't know where you're going, you don't know when somebody's trying to take you back there. Dr. Kelly came to this church just three years ago, and in that time, he's cultivated the largest Juneteenth celebration in the state of Alabama, right here on these church grounds. He says, let's educate while we celebrate. He comes with just a completely different outlook on the ministry, and it's more about a vision and not doing it the same way that we used to do. His life dedicated to social activism, education, and having a different outlook on the ministry. He's an everyday guy who fights for people, people of all walks of life. Comes with the hope of change. I think the ultimate outcome, bringing about a more just and a more loving world. I think we will love each other more, treat each other better, and grow together if we recognize the truth. And an encouragement to do your part. He has inspired me to become more involved. Some of us have um, tutored students at MLK. And when asked how he felt about being nominated as a community hero, his answer says it all. I don't co consider myself being a hero, but I uh, think that all of us are uh, heroes in a sense, it depends on who we're heroes to. Uh, I just try to follow that adage of John Wesley, the founder of the church. I try to do the best I can to all the people I can in all the places I can, as long as the other can. Get Fox 54 Plus for Roku and Fire TV. Watch local newscasts live or on your schedule. Plus local exclusives like Fox 54 Sports Extra. Fox 54 Plus, live, local, and always on.
What are we talking about? Crap, 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 crap. Everyone's talking about Crapopolis, the new comedy from Dan Harmon, co-creator of Rick and Morty. You still can't die, right, Mom? Of course I can't die. I'm a goddess. What kind of idiot are you? Witness the start of civilization. I swear it's not as bad as the name sounds. All that look. Crapopolis, special premiere September 24th after football. Crap chain. Part of animation domination on Fox. Woody Anderson Ford and Fox 54 invite you to the 26th Annual Family and MWR Oktoberfest. Rides, games, and great German cuisine. Your choice of passes, admission, and entertainment for only $15. Or add unlimited rides for just $10 more. Plus the best in local brews available at the Craft Beer Garden. Family and MWR Oktoberfest. Brought to you by Woody Anderson Ford at Redstone Arsenal Activity Field. September 15th through 17th. Enter Gate 10, Patton Road South. The Athens community is helping to make a difference with a self-serve food pantry. It's called Connie's Cabinet, named in honor of Connie Ridgeway. Our Jasmine Bird tells us why that name and this pantry is so significant. Connie's Cabinet is a community self-serve food pantry created to honor the legacy of Connie Ridgeway in a positive way after she was murdered in her Rogersville apartment in October 2015. When you think about what happened in October 2015, We've tried to think together, me and Austin and Cameron, of things that we can do that shine a light on Connie's legacy. Ridgeway's son, Austin Williams, agrees. It makes me feel uh, feel good. It feels a bit, a bit lighter. I'm, I'm happy that we're able to remember kind of her kind and, and, and generous spirit. That's what she was, she was known for in her community, just being a very kind and gentle person. The work for Connie's cabinet started last December with an event in Rogersville. In this moment of dedicating Connie's cabinet in front of the Athens Limestone Public Library keeps Ridgeway's legacy alive. It's done great since December. And so with Kathy Lawrence and with Angie McElyea, they both got together and decided that they wanted to help move this effort forward and that established two more pantries, one here at the library and then one goes to Elgin, Alabama. So we'll have three pantries in honor of Connie Ridgeway. Three. Woo. I think this is a really good way to remember her and to help people because a lot of times you don't realize that people are food insecure. And if anyone in the community is in need of food. We want them to feel comfortable taking the food. They don't have to answer any questions, no questionnaire. It's free for them to take and we want the community to put food into the pantries. In Athens, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. There's been trouble on the rise and fall at the Low Mill Arts and Entertainment Complex. Elevators have been out of service for nearly a month now. The 120-plus-year-old facility has two elevators, including a freight lift that was part of the original textile mill. Both are out of commission, and there's no set date as to when they'll come back into service. As Ravenwood Meadery, one of the Low Mill vendors, told its customers on social media, Quote, Low Mill Arts and Entertainment keeps visitor safety in very high regard and will not reopen the elevators until a solution can be found, unquote. Now, there are still many accessible entrances to get you on the ground floor at doors 4, 13, 15, 17, and 21. Ravenwood and other vendors that occupy the second floor may have options to help those who need assistance. You're asked to contact those vendors to learn more. Living next to one of the hottest music venues can have its benefits, but for residents of the Sherwood neighborhood, they could use a little break from the noise. Our Ken McCoy spoke with Councilman Bill Kling on how the city is addressing the issue. According to one user on Reddit, quote, the Orion is the best thing that happened to Huntsville in the 18 years I lived here. We just want the neighborhood to be able to enjoy themselves within the guidelines of the ordinance. In a meeting earlier this week, Huntsville City Councilman Bill Kling looked at issues affecting District 4. This included Sherwood Park residents' concern over noise heard at the Orion Amphitheater. That neighborhood is actually about a mile away from the amphitheater, and they've been complaining about noise and also about late hours. According to the city ordinance, the concerts must end at 11 p.m. In addition to that, then there's certain noise level, decibel noise levels that have to be complied with. But the Orion isn't the only venue getting complaints. There's a big bar called the Furniture Factory 
located on Meridian Street. It uh, has live entertainment and uh, there have been complaints that I've been receiving from people in the downtown area. A resident in their neighborhood shared on next door, quote, we live in Old Town and Furniture Factory and Rocket Republic border our neighborhood. The music can be heard all the way over past Oakwood. Both areas are being worked by the city departments. And the city only has one request. Uh, all we're looking for is compliance. It's not changing anything. It's just this is the ordinance. It's on the books. When asked what possible solutions have been discussed, reversing the hours could be a possibility. If there's a worst case scenario that happens and things keep going as they have been going in the past, you know, hypothetically, the council could look at reversing the uh, hours that we extended last year. But again, uh, I don't think we're going to get to that point. For Fox 54 News, I'm Ken McCoy. The proposed water rate increase was presented to council members and was open for public comment. Our Sedona Meadows was at the meeting and shares what this could all mean. Huntsville Utilities is proposing a water rate increase here in the Rocket City. This change uh, would generate $16.4 million in new revenue. It applies across all rate categories. Uh, an average residential customer, 4,000 some odd gallons is $6.34. If you have uh, a normal uh, residential use and a normal irrigation use of 6,000 meters, your bill is going to go up by about almost $17. Essentially, this plan is meant to address the growth we continue to see here. It's something that they've wanted for the last few years, but haven't pursued the request until they came up with a comprehensive water master plan. That's what you're seeing here tonight. According to Huntsville Utilities, the last water rate increase was in 2016. They've maintained the lowest rates in the region. They claim that with this proposed increase, the water rates would still remain among the lowest in the nation. Members of City Council are wondering how stable this plan will be within the next five years. Wes Kelly, the CEO of Huntsville Utilities, explains. The cash model that, that, that we live by in our, our five-year planning window is, is, is baked in has this rate increase as a stable for five years. Um, so to answer your question directly, this rate increase has a stable in water for five years. Huntsville Utilities is wanting to use this rate increase to expand and improve the water infrastructure. Anytime a customer has to think about their water utility, that's not good. So stability, consistency uh, of quality, uh, and making sure that that infrastructure is scaling with Huntsville. And they say water system materials are more expensive than before, like the cost of water valves increasing 132 percent since 2016. If approved, the water rate increase would begin with the October 2023 billing cycle. Huntsville City Council won't vote on this master plan until sometime in September. In Huntsville, Sedona Meadows, Fox 54 News. A proposed rate hike by Huntsville Utilities will have customers seeing a 35 percent increase in their monthly water bill. According to their Facebook post, quote, the primary reason for this request is the growth in our community and the subsequent need to expand and improve the water infrastructure. To better understand how this will look, let's check the numbers. According to WiseVoter.com, the average amount of a monthly water bill in Alabama is about $30. The new Huntsville rate will still be among the lowest in North Alabama and lower than other large cities across the state. A typical Huntsville Utilities residential bill using 4,400 gallons would rise from $18.72 to $25.30. In Mobile, the same bill would be $28.83, in Montgomery $47.28, and in Madison $25.51, and in Decatur it would be slightly lower at $21.52. So what does that mean for the cost of some common household water uses? Taking a shower would go up to 2.8 cents, flushing the toilet 0.4 cents, a load of laundry 2.1 cents, a load of dishes 1 cent, and watering your yard $1.82. The last water rate modification was back in 2016. Since then, HU says they have continued to operate an award-winning water system. However, supply chain and inflationary pressures have caused sharp increases in materials. They also stated, quote, we know a rate modification is not the news anyone wants to receive, but we also know that having a safe, reliable, and clean source of water is important to this community, and we're committed to ensuring that we provide it at the best possible value. Coming up at 9, we have more from tonight's water rate meeting. For Fox 54 News, I'm Ken McCoy. 
Well, today, Jemison High School celebrated big today. The school held a ribbon cutting in celebration of the new JHS athletics and welding shop facilities. JHS has expanded their practice facilities where students can go indoors and outdoors. They have also expanded locker rooms, concession stands, and more. Huntsville City School Superintendent says they aim to provide excellence in all areas, including athletics, supporting both male and female students. Here we're in our um, pitching and baseball facility. We added some soccer facilities and football and even tennis facilities um, to show the excellence we expect in all our Huntsville City Schools. And we have an addition to the welding facility here at Jemison High School to accommodate more students. That's great. Now JHS will also be able to double the number of students who have access to the welding program and give them a credential to leave ready for the workforce. We've all heard of it, but now post pandemic, it has a new meaning and nearly one in five Alabama students are chronically absent from school. A reported 127,000 students miss more than 18 days of school. That's more than half a month. Our Jasmine Bird tells us what Limestone County school officials are doing to try and keep kids in class. Well, post COVID, you know, like most of the country, we we're dealing with, uh, you know, higher absentee rates than before. Limestone County Schools Director of Safety and Discipline says from a district level, they put several procedures in place. That um, kind of help uh, track and not only notify the parents, that's one of the key aspects is making sure that we got communication with the parents well and well and it starts with an email up to phone calls and then parents conferences. They've also built in some flexibility with some e-learning days. They can apply for an e-learning day through the system in advance and get their instruction online for those days that they miss throughout the year so they're not missing instruction. Nearly one in five Alabama students are chronically absent from school. The uh, chronic absenteeism by the state is classified as 18 absences or more. Um, now, once you become unexcused absences at seven, then you fall under what we, we consider truant. And then that, at that point, it falls under the truancy court uh, to handle that. Are there any targeted work organizations helping the effort to keep students in the classroom? Well, the every time we do uh, open house and parent nights and parent conferences, you know, we communicate attendance, the importance of it and the, and the reasons they need to be in school. Um, Students also have, we have a peer helper organization at the schools uh, that, you know, students that may be struggling or disinterested and are losing connection and with wanting to be in school, um, where they have kind of like a mentor to help them along the way to encourage them and support them, you know, in whatever they need. In Athens, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. You can feel the energy in the air here at Alabama A&M University as different players and Bulldog fans look ahead to this upcoming fall athletic season. Fan day is about the fans, the alumni, uh, uh, Bulldog Nation, uh, friends and family of the, of the university. To mix and mingle with our fans and get to know them on a deeper level from just outside of sports. For many, it's a reminder of the memories they made here, now coming back as alumni. Every year I come back, ever since I've been an alumni, I really love Alabama A&M. And for others, this is something they're experiencing for the first time. I'm a freshman and I'm just here to like get the excitement of what being a Bulldog is. Fans have been able to shake hands with players from soccer, cross country, volleyball and football. I love football. Showing their support before the season. <laughs> And with Alabama A&M's freshman class being the largest in this HBCU's history, they'll likely take up a big portion of the stands. It's really exciting to like be able to come out and be a part of that support group and be a freshman, a part of that large amount of class. So it's really exciting seeing the support system for HBCU team. And for these players, the support is not only felt in the stands, it's also felt by their teams. My experience has been like a family. That's what I love about here, just being with my teammates and feeling like a family at all times, especially being away from home. This event is getting the players, fans, and coaches excited. It's a great opportunity. It's a great event and uh, we look forward to it every year. And ready for what this season will bring. Go Bulldogs. Speaking of the Bulldogs, how about this? The first HBCU bobblehead series unveiled recently, and how about Fox 54 getting uh, number 32 of 2023 produced 
bobbleheads, and only 13 HBCUs were part of the first series, which includes your alma mater, Howard. Howard University. That's uh, just the reason for me to get more, more Howard gear. I got you on that. But yeah, here's some of the other schools, which include Delaware State, Alabama State, Fayetteville State, Tuskegee, North Carolina A&T, just to name a few. Got to get Southern on the next round, you know? Yes, absolutely, Mo. Thank you. That's it for the Week in Review, but you have so much more to watch this weekend and every weekend on Fox 54 Plus, including encores of First Down Friday Night, our high school football highlights show, Getting Real, going over the best Hollywood has offered in genre movies over the past 30 years, and what goes better than a movie than dinner. Get great, easy recipes in the digital exclusive series, Cooking with Styles. These and so much more are available throughout the weekend. It's on Fox 54 Plus on your Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV devices. And don't forget, school is in session, and so is Fox 54's top teacher. Nominate an educator who's made a difference in your child's life. Learn more at fox54.com. For now, I'm Kenesha Dees. And for everyone at Fox 54 News, have a great weekend and be safe.